Hey everyone, welcome back to White Sparrow Living, Luke 12.6. I'm Wendy and welcome to October's Mystery Box Challenge. I'm so excited to be doing this with Courtney at Creative on the Cheap along with a bunch of other creators here on YouTube. So I'm sure you know how this works. We each send a box to another person. Courtney makes this round circle of happiness that goes from creator to creator. There'll be a playlist link in the description box below so that you can go through all of those videos. Today I'm going to be opening my box from Valerie at Auntie Cuckoo. So I'm going to be opening her box and show you all what is going on or what she sent me. Oh, and then I sent my box to Christina Elizabeth over at Christina Elizabeth DIY. So she'll be opening her box from me. So there is a twist. This is considered an anything goes box. So there's seven to 10 items from anywhere, including from our own stash. The box will include two wrapped and labeled challenge items, just like every month. And then the twist for this month is we must work red or green yarn and a button into one of our DIYs. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway, let's see what Val sent us this month. And so here's her pretty, oh, I love this wrapping paper. There's a challenge item. Here's another challenge item. Oh, this is so pretty. It matches my craft room. My second craft room. You know, my old craft room. Anyway, okay, so let's read her little card. It's black and white buffalo check. And it says, my friend, it has been a blessing getting to know you through the mystery box challenges. I know you will create something beautiful. Happy crafting. Love, Val. Yay, okay, Val. So we have a house. Here's a beautiful Christmas tree, which I have absolutely none of. I ran out of these, so I'll definitely be using this. Oh, this is some really pretty yarn. Maybe I'll use this yarn for our twist this month. Anyway, that's really pretty. And then we have, of course, some jingle bells. These are the smallest little jingle bells I've ever seen. And then we have, oh, I saw these. Um, like a wooden hoop or an embroidery hoop, but it's plastic and it's red and white, which would be perfect for Christmas projects. And then, oh, I don't think I need to do anything to this. This is so stinking cute. This can't be from Dollar Tree, but how sweet is that? I see a color theme going on here. And then we have a bamboo cutting board. Yay, we can use that in all kinds of things. Oh, and then, to give us a little cushion at the bottom of our box, there's the black and white buffalo check placemat. Cute. We can all, I don't think you can have too many of these. All right, so let's see what the challenge items were. There's no number on them, so this is so cute. Look at how adorable this wrapping paper is. Maybe I can use the paper in one of my crafts. Okay, at least they're small. This should be manageable. Oh, she's just being sweet. Look, how cute. It's a little pet scarf. I'll be able to use that for sure. Super sweet. I know she's just being nice. <laughs> well, I haven't opened this one yet, so we'll see. I was super sweet with Christina Elizabeth. Well, except for one. Yeah, we'll see. You guys will have to see what I sent her. Oh, puffy paint in red and green, Val. <laughs> That's so sweet of you. Puffy and sparkles. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Okay, so I'm gonna check back with you guys. I actually just got the box today, but I couldn't wait. So <laughs> anyway, we'll come up with some ideas and see what we make out of all these pretties. And so we'll be right back. Oh, no, we're gonna go right now. Let's go. For this project, I'm gonna be using the Christmas tree and the wrapping paper, and I'm gonna to try to incorporate the yarn from the wrapping on her items. And then I'm also gonna take the filling that was inside the box, and I think I'm gonna use that too. So for my own stash, I'm gonna be using this little calendar house and a box that you see at Dollar Tree all the time. And then to incorporate buttons into this project, I'm gonna use these black ones from my stash. And because I recorded this a couple of weeks after I got my box, I totally forgot that the yarn that we're supposed to use with the buttons was supposed to be green or red. So I'm totally disqualified. I didn't do that. So I didn't even realize it until after I was editing <laughs> my unboxing. So anyway, oh well, I'm sorry, Courtney. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take my wrapping paper and I'm just gonna trace my tree onto both pieces. I really worked out my fruit of patience in this because I got all of the little tape that Valerie put onto it to wrap my gifts. I got it all off of there so that I could make this project. 
So I cut out two trees because I'm gonna cover the front and the back of my wooden tree. It's pretty messed up, but I decided I wanted that rustic and worn look anyway. So we're gonna embrace those wrinkles, people. <laughs> so I'm just gonna crumple up my wrapping paper a little bit more so it looks intentional. And then to get it on there, I'm just gonna use a foam brush and apply a pretty good coat of some Mod Podge because the wrapping paper is nice and thick. So I wanted to make sure it stayed down, especially on the edges and then once I get it on there I'm going to push those wrinkles into the paper so that you can still see them and then once I get that all done on the front and back I'm going to use my sanding sponge and distress all the edges of my tree and for those little nooks and crannies I just used a sweet little emery board that a friend sent to me in a perky prize and just get those little corners all nice and sanded And then I just used a scrap piece of the wrapping paper to fill in the little label bracket just to give it some more cuteness. And then I'm gonna take the little calendar and pull off that square portion. The backing of the house came off with it, which was perfect so that I could just get off the extra edges using my craft knife. And then I'll hot glue that into the middle of my tree. And then you know I'm gonna save that little chipboard house. <laughs> So now I'm going to take my box and hot glue a piece of styrofoam inside and that's where I'm going to set my tree and I'm going to just push it down in there and you could actually leave it there but I want to make sure it stays in place so I'm going to add some hot glue, tuck it in there and then to make sure it stays snug as a bug in a rug I'm going to take a couple of Jenga pieces and hot glue those at the base. So I actually should have put these buttons on before I put it onto my box, but I'm gonna just stagger my buttons, make them little and big and whatever, and then once I figure out the placement, I'll hot glue those all down. And then for the tippy top of my tree, I'm just gonna place a white scatter foam star at the very top. So I wanted to incorporate the black yarn that Val had wrapped my challenge items with. And remember, I forgot that it was supposed to be green or red, but anyway, <laughs> I tied it around the box. And when I tied the bow, it kind of just reminded me of a spider. So I didn't like that. <laughs> so I'm gonna wrap the box around and then I'm gonna go back and make a bow at the end. And I'll show you that in a second. So then I took the gift filler that she had in her box and I'm going to hot glue that down to the base of my tree and then to make my little spider yarn <laughs> stand up proper I just put it on a perky little bow using some striped ribbon from Walmart and I thought that would kind of make it stand up a little perkier and not look so much like a spider and as I was doing this my son-in-law stopped by and asked me what I was making so I told him. Bows. Bows? <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome i'm putting that in my video so as you can see our daughter does not have five children she has six <laughs> so this is my twist challenge project that i totally failed at because i only retain water and i can't remember anything <laughs> you could use this as a countdown to christmas i'm going to be using it to count down the days until our son comes home for christmas i love this one and i hope you guys like it too Next, I'm gonna be using this Buffalo Check placemat and the embroidery hoop that Val sent me. I was gonna use the yarn, but that one I had to pivot because it didn't look right. So I'll only be using the placemat and the embroidery hoop. 
So all I did was cut down my placemat and I'm gonna put that inside of my hoop and I'm sure you guys know how to do this. You just open up the screw at the top and then separate those two hoops. You put your fabric or whatever you're covering it with on the white hoop and then place your red one around it and then put that screw back in there and tighten it up. And then you just cut off the excess fabric in the back. So then I just took a Dollar Tree reindeer ornament, cut off the string at the top, and then I'm gonna glue that onto the fabric. And if you do this project, I thought it was so quick and easy. If you have a big tree, this would be perfect. You could make a whole bunch of these and decorate an entire Christmas tree. Now I'm gonna take some gingham ribbon from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna loop that through the top part of my embroidery hoop and then fed on a couple of red beads from the Dollar Tree and then I'll just tie a knot at the top and then to embellish it, I'm just gonna hot glue some greenery, also from the Dollar Tree, to the very top of the ornament. And I used a couple of different kinds just to give it some more interest and a little bit more fullness. And then I made a sweet little bow and glued that to the top of my ornament, and it was done. And I loved how this turned out so much that I gave him a friend. This was so easy and I didn't have a lot of time to make all of these projects because Valerie sent me some really cute stuff. So I didn't dilly dally, but this one was definitely the easiest. I love them and I hope you guys like them too. So now for this next project, we're gonna be using this pretty Buffalo check reindeer and the bamboo cutting board that Val sent me. So I'm gonna use some floral foam from the Dollar Tree and these are sectioned in four different blocks, but it was too tall using the full size of one, so I had to cut it in half. And then I'm gonna take the outside hoop of those 3D wreath forms and I'm gonna cut that with my big fat cutters at about the two o'clock and the five o'clock position. This takes a little bit of muscles to get that cut, but if you have some good cutters, it'll be pretty easy. Or if you have a Michael J. <laughs> So then I'm gonna glue that to my cutting board, but then I'm gonna use some staples to staple it into the wood to get, keep it in place. And I have a piece of scrap wood underneath it just so I don't mess up my work surface. So once I get my hoop secured, I'm gonna take that floral foam and just hot glue that down to the bottom. That's where we're gonna place all of our pretties and then ultimately our reindeer is going to go on top so that he's lifted a little bit. So then I took some pretty red ornaments and these are like the middle size ones. I'm going to cut off that top part with my wire cutters and then I took my hot pokey tool and I'm going to stick that all the way through and melt through to the other side so that I can feed these on to that wire hoop that we just attached to the cutting board. Now I'll have this heat wand linked in the description box below but you can also use the tip of your hot glue gun. I've seen other people do that. And then to be able to feed my beads onto my wreath form, I took off the little round piece. But you can see there, it's kind of getting weak because that's a seam. This ends up breaking, but I've already shown you how to do it. I'm just gonna do it with a different hoop and I'll show you that in a second. But all you're gonna do is just feed on all of your ornaments. And I just staggered because this was all I had. So thankfully it worked and you'll see what I have to do at the end. I went even smaller with the two little ones. I took a teeny tiny little one and just gobbed on a bunch of hot glue inside and around the top and then just pressed it on to cover that wire. 
So you could already see that it was bouncing around and it was a different seam that it actually broke on. But that's okay, we we're gonna pivot and thank goodness I had these brass wreath rings. They only had one seam on it, so that's where I did my cutting. And thank goodness I also had another bamboo cutting board. I think I have a few of these. <laughs> so I'm just gonna do all those same steps and finish it up with the teeny tiny ball at the end. So now I'm just going to take my pretty little reindeer and I'm going to hot glue him to the top of my floral foam and then I'll take my Christmas greenery, whatever I have left, I'm really running low on this you guys, but I'm going to cut down those little pieces and start poking those into the floral foam and I'm using hot glue so that they stay nice and secure. So once I get all of my greenery in there on the front, back, and sides, I'm going to make a perky bow using some black and red gingham ribbon and some black grow grain ribbon. I'll attach those in the middle and then use a pipe cleaner to wrap those around and then foof out my loops and then I'll put that right in the center at the bottom of my reindeer. And then right in the center, I'm going to take another little teeny tiny ornament and poke it right in the middle of my bow. And here it is all finished and I think this is so, so pretty. I have a lot of people that ask me about centerpieces that they can do for church functions for Christmas, but this would be a really easy one once you use the right ring, of course. Anyway, I'm not using the black and red buffalo check this year, but my sister is, so I know she's going to love this on her table. I love it and I hope you like it too. So now I'm going to use this red and white pretty yarn that Val sent me and I'm just going to use a board from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to get that all ready and prepped. I realized I don't really have to do this because I am going to be using this green and white. It's not green and white. It's like green and lighter green <laughs> gingham fabric from the Dollar Tree. I'm just going to take it and I'm going to cover up my board using some hot glue. And when you get to the corners, just kind of cut those down at an angle so that you can get a nice finished edge. But all the ickies will be on back so you won't even see that. I didn't even really have to take the paper off this time, but oh well. <laughs> and when I put this fabric on there, I'm gonna go from side to side. So I did the long sides and then pulled it really taut so that I could pull it over on the other side. And it's easy when you have these little lines, it's kind of like grid marks so that you get all of your fabric even and no wavy lines. So then I took a piece of binder paper and I'm just going to fold that in half and then make a triangle with it and that's just going to be my template so that I have a nice shape of a tree. So then I just took some white chalk and I'm going to draw around my template so that I can see where to glue and where to wrap my yarn. And this is just some clear glue that I had. I don't even know where I got it. I think somebody gifted it to me. But anyway, I'm just gonna make a line at the very bottom and then put my yarn on top of it. And then when I get to the end, I'm gonna wrap it around and then just keep going all the way up. But the lines will keep my shape going so that I don't get all wonky and have a wonky Christmas tree. <laughs> but I love the white and the red. And then along with this green, this just gives me kind of like vintage vibes. And so I went with that. Well, and we're going to do more in just a second. So I'm going to go all the way up. I did it. I started out line by line, 
but then realized I could add a lot more glue and since this isn't hot glue, I don't have to be so quick about it. And here's what it looks like with just the yarn. And uh, I love textury goodness and I wanted to feel this all day long. It actually reminds me of that ribbon candy. But anyway, so now I found a little scrap piece of wood that I'm gonna use as the trunk. And then I wanted to put a star at the top. So I'm gonna stain it as close to the same color that was already on that little piece of wood. Who knows what that was for, but you know I like to keep my scraps. And then since the little piece of wood was too long, I needed to cut that down. So I'm using my Dremel, but I wanted to show you guys this. <laughs> Make sure your blades are in tight or your bits or whatever these are called <laughs> before you turn them on. And then I'm just gonna hot glue my trunk and my star to my sign. Now I was gonna just be done with it and add a few Dollar Tree beads to the top on a piece of jute twine as the hanger, but I wasn't really happy with how it looked so I did some more stuff, you know. So I'm gonna take the little teeny weeny bells that Val sent me and I'm gonna give them a little rustiness by putting some cinnamon into some Mod Podge and I'm just gonna get those all rustied up. I just kind of poured them in there and started painting them and then I'll take those out and let them dry. And those are gonna become our ornaments. Now see, if I would have remembered that we were supposed to use red or green yarn and the buttons, I would have just put little buttons on this as the ornaments, but you know, my brain. So I love how this turned out anyway, but it was done a whole bunch of times and you could be done here. It's still pretty cutie patootie, but we're taking it up a notch. And then after I get my bells on as the ornaments, I still wanted a little bit more to it because I really liked the look of that green and red. I don't know, for some reason, it just looked really old to me. So I'm going to go with that and try to capitalize on that vintage look. So I'm gonna take these rulers from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna pull off the plastic parts and those just come off by hand, super easy. And I'm gonna paint them both with my white chalk paint and I don't have to paint the whole thing so I have a little bit to hang on to as I'm painting. And once they're dry, I wanna distress them. So I took my Dollar Tree marker in walnut and I wanted to make sure that it was close to the same kind of stain color as my antique wax. So I'm just gonna go along the edges of my rulers and get that looking kind of distressed and weathered. You could also do this with your antique wax, but this was just a little bit easier. And you can see I had my antique wax ready to go. So now I'm gonna measure and I want this to be a little bit hanging over on the side so that I have one on the top and the bottom. I'll take those outside and use my chop saw to cut those down and then I'm just gonna use my hot glue to attach them to the top and bottom. Then I took some wired jute from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna use that as the hanger. So I'll hot glue both sides onto the back and then I just cut off a little piece of that plastic ruler to cover up where I hot glued my twine down to the back. That just gives it a little more security. So I was falling more and more in love with this piece, but I still wanted to hang something from the side because I thought it needed something. I had rustied up a couple of bells, but I felt like I wanted some fabric of some sort, but I didn't have anything. 
about three days later, I found this Dollar Tree fabric in my stash and realized the trees are the same little gingham that I covered my board in. So this is exactly what I needed. I was so excited to find this. So I'm just gonna rip off a couple of strips and then turn that into a bow. I used some of the green gingham and I'm just gonna fold that fabric over in a messy bow and then tie it with one of the green pieces and then I'm gonna tie those rusty bells to the middle of my bow and then attach it over into the corner. And it's done. And you know, I thought this was a really good kind of lesson, I guess, to show that even when you don't think something's right or you're just not happy with it, if you just wait and keep going, it'll always get better. But that also can be true with ourselves. So when you think you're not perfect and maybe not as good as you could be, just remember that God's not done with you yet. I love this and I hope you guys like it too. So now it's time to use our challenge item and I'm going to be using this long Easter blessings board. I still want you to have Easter blessings, but we're going to use it for this guy. I'm going to use this extra piece of chipboard from another project. I wanted to do something different than just being a snowman scarf, but I decided why fight it? It looks like a snowman scarf, so let's just do it and just make a snowman. So I put my scarf on him and then I'm going to put my chipboard piece. That's going to be the rim of his hat. So I wanted to try and get the right proportions because this is a long board and you know, he's going to be a chunky, but it's going to look like he's on a diet. So I'm just going to sketch out where I want his body and his head to be. And then I'm going to take my black chalk paint and make his little hat. I just kind of made him little curvies at the end so that it looked like a little top hat. And then I used my white chalk paint to start making his head and then his body and then a third, I don't know, what would that be? His third part. I don't know. Anyway, I want to make those circles not perfect, but I also kind of don't want them to be smooth at the edges. That way, if there's a little bit of paint on there, it makes it look more snowy and realistic. I don't know. You guys know I don't paint right. I'm just going by my own rules. There really are no rules when you're painting though, right? Because it's art. It's art. I can call it art and get away with any of my silly mistakes. So I'm just gonna go all the way down. I did leave a little bit of the brown peeking through because you know I love that rustic look. And then once I get it all painted, I'm gonna go back in with some shadowing and I'm trying to make it look like the snowball that's above is casting a shadow on the snowball that's below. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, you guys. You could just watch and <laughs> listen to the music. <laughs> So once everything's dry, I'm gonna hot glue the rim of his hat to his hat and then kind of put it a little crookedy so it gives it a little character and cuteness. And then once that's on there, I'm gonna take my puffy paint. I didn't plan to do this, but all of the other things that I was gonna do, I didn't like. So I'm gonna use the puffy paint and the sparkly paint that Val sent me and make a little poinsettia and then a couple of sprigs of holly just to give it some cuteness on his hat. So now I'm going to add his little scarf so that I can know exactly where to put his face. And so there's hook and loop tape on there to keep it in place on the front. And then in the back, because it's a straight board, I'm going to use my hot glue and kind of pinch it in the middle so that it's nice and snug. And you can see here that I didn't paint the back of my sign, but when I'm doing this many projects, I really have to hurry. So if you're not going to see it, I don't paint it. Plus I run out of paint 
because of how many projects I have to do. But if you guys do this at home, make sure you paint the back. So I took my brush that was sitting in the water that I used to paint my snowman, and I'm just gonna make a little shiny piece on the top of his hat. Just go down, swipe that, and it looks like it's a little shiny highlight. And then I took my pencil and drew out his face. You can go online and just Google snowman face images and look for all kinds of different things to kind of help you make a face. I was gonna do some kind of cute eyeballs and there's so many different expressions that you can do, but I thought this was actually perfect. So I'm just gonna do lines and if it's easier, you know I really wanna do it. <laughs> and so I'm gonna give him a sweet smile and then I use my orange chalk paint, also known as pumpkin, and I'm going to make a little nose for him in the shape of a carrot. And then I took a couple of black buttons and I'll glue those onto his little tummy. And then I wanted to give him some rosy cheeks as every snowman should have. So I took a sponge dauber and then my Stampin' Up stamp pad and just popped that onto where his little lines are in his smile. But then I realized I was gonna go over the carrot, so I just covered that up and masked it with my glove and then put his little cheek on there. And then I just loved his little facial expression so much. Originally, I was gonna put something like snow happy or something, but I decided the perfect words were it is well. And I just want everybody to know that I'm still getting emails and comments and everybody sending me their prayers and it's been a huge encouragement and I'm feeling so good. Well, now I'm getting, I am really feeling so good and getting stronger. And I know, I know that I know that I know that those are from your prayers. So I want to say thank you to everybody and let you know that it is well. And here he is all finished and I think he's so, so adorable. And I was able to use both of my challenge items. I wasn't planning to use my puffy paint this way, but <laughs> man, was I stuck on that one. But anyway, I was also going to put some twigs as his arms. I think that would be really cute if you decided to do this project, but I love him the way he is. And I hope you guys like him too. So Val sent me this little house, but I thought he could use some friends. So I got 11 of them and I'm gonna put this project together. So the first thing I did was numbered them and I'm gonna do four across three rows of four. So I numbered them all. This was the hardest part of this. Well, no, it wasn't the hardest part. This is pretty advanced, I think, but I think it's so worth it. So I'm gonna paint all of my houses completely white. And then I went on to Etsy and bought this digital download, which I think is the prettiest 12 days of Christmas print ever. And this is from Graceful Ginger Design. I will have that linked in the description box below. So because these are offset, all of the pictures, it's meant to be you know blown up and made into a picture or framed or whatever. But because the images were offset, you couldn't do a full square around all of them. So I had to kind of get creative. I'm going to blow this up and do a bunch of different copies so that they'll fit on each of my houses. And I'm going to rip around the images so that I can get into those little nooks and crannies. And I thought that would be cute anyway with that frayed edge and just give it some more interest. So you have to be kind of mindful about which images are gonna fit onto which houses. So for example, some of the images like Seven Swans a Swimming is longer or more horizontal. So I use that one on a longer house. And then there's taller ones and fatter ones. So you just have to correspond it with a house that it's gonna fit onto. And then to place those onto the houses, I'm just gonna use some Mod Podge and get that on there. I'm not gonna go over the top of it because I don't want my ink to smear.
So once I got my base set all ready, I knew I had to have something that was gonna be pretty sturdy at the bottom. So I got this scrap two by four from our garage and cut that down so that it was a little bit longer than the length of my four houses at the bottom. And then I'm gonna take my Waverly chalk paint in crystal and I'm gonna paint over the top and the sides of it. And then I'm gonna go over back on top of it with a towel to distress it and take off a lot of that paint and let some of that pretty wood show through. And then once the paint was almost dry, I'm gonna go back in with my sanding block and give it some more distressing. And I just love the look of wood under paint. So now it's time to put my houses onto my block and I'm just gonna mark where they need to go. And then I use some all-purpose adhesive for permanent hold. And then I'm gonna use my glue gun to get my houses to stay in place while that permanent adhesive dries. And for my first row of houses, I want the backs to be flush so that when I put my second row of houses on, It'll be from the front, but it'll be on the back of these flat houses. <laughs> Does that make sense? You see, you'll see what I mean in just a second. But I need to first set them up to see exactly where my pieces of paper, the, the images need to go on the houses so that you can see everything and the words will show. And then once I get all of my images transferred onto the fronts of my houses, I'm gonna put it where it needs to go and then just make a mark of where my glue needs to go so that I can put that into place. So while a lot of people might be familiar with the song, The 12 Days of Christmas, some of us might not know what the meaning is behind the song. And so this was actually a song that was used to hide the meanings of Christianity when it was not okay to worship. So in order to teach about the faith, this song helps us to remember certain things that are important to Christianity. So each of the gifts that are given during those 12 days has a meaning behind it. So we start with a partridge in a pear tree, and that means Jesus Christ. And first of all, when you talk about my true love gave to me, my true love is God. So then you have the two turtle doves, and that's the Old and New Testament. Then the three French hens is the three virtues of the faith, and that's faith, hope, and charity. And then the fourth day of Christmas is the four calling birds, those represent the Gospels and the Evangelists, which are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And then the five golden rings represent the first five books of the Bible, which is also called the Pentateuch. And then the six geese laying represents the six days of creation. The seven swans a-swimming represent the gifts of the Holy Spirit or the sacraments. The eight maids a-milking are the Beatitudes. The nine dancers dancing are the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit. Ten lords a-leaping are the Ten Commandments. Eleven pipers piping are the eleven faithful apostles. And the twelve drummers drumming are the twelve points of doctrine in the Apostles' Creed. And the 12 days of Christmas start on Christmas Day and then 12 days later on January 6th is when we celebrate Epiphany. Now, every time you hear this song, which I'll also have linked down below, you'll think of all of the beauty of our faith and Christianity, which is the whole reason for this season. <laughs> and then I cut out the title where it says the 12 days of Christmas, and I'm gonna put that on the front of my two by four using some Mod Podge. And I did tear the ends of my cutout so that it would match the rest of my images. So I found these holly picks at Walmart and I think these are so pretty. They're soft and sagey and not the super bright green that you usually see the holly picks in. So I'm just gonna cut a couple of these off and then add some Dollar Tree greenery that you see me use so often. I'm telling you, I'm running low on all of my greenery. I haven't been to Dollar Tree in a minute, so I'm gonna have to stock up again. And I used one of Dollar Tree star ornaments and this has actually got two sides to it. So I'm just gonna pull it apart and glue a dowel to it and then glue that on the back of my houses so that the star is over like my little town of Bethlehem. <laughs> 
So you guys know I like to make some of my projects interactive if I can teach my kids or my grandkids something about Jesus. So I found these little teeny sacks in some card making supplies that I had on hand. And I'm just going to cut down some cardstock and put all of those meanings of the 12 days of Christmas inside of those little bags. And then I'm going to have these on the back of my houses. So I just wrote them all out. And then like for the Beatitudes or the Gospels or the... Pentateuch, any, anything that has a list of something, I'm going to put that on the back of the card so that not only are they going to know that the three French hens are the three virtues of the church, they'll know what those three virtues are and so forth. And then I'm going to take some Dollar Tree ribbon and I'm just going to hot glue that to the top of these little cards on the front and the back so that they have something to pull out in order to get those cards. And then I'll take those little bags and glue those to their corresponding house. And of course, I'm going to paint the back this time because they will be seeing it. Somebody will be seeing it. But you can see how easy it is to just pull these out and push it back in. And I think this is just so fun. And here it is all finished. And I am absolutely in love with this. I love these colors. I don't have them in any of my rooms. So this is going to my daughter's house for Christmas. And I have already shown her. She loves it. The kids haven't seen it yet, but I know they're going to love it. And I think they might know some of these already. Anyway, I love it and I hope you like it too. I hope you enjoyed all of these projects. And if you did, don't forget to give them a thumbs up, comment, let me know what you think. If you're not already, I hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button down below as well as the little bell right next to it so that you can be notified every time I upload a brand new video. Thank you to Courtney for inviting me to be in on this happy, fun mystery box challenge again this month. Remember the reason for the season. I hope everyone has a blessed day and remember to always be the light. Bye.